Hello everybody, welcome to The Very Show, the very first episode. Thank you guys for coming here. Thank you. My name's Anthony Sanders, I'm your host. We're here at the Grim Bugatti, which is the name of this apartment and is the name of this pseudo set of The Very Show. I live here with my roommates Evan Lorch and Johnny Fabrizio. You'll be seeing them periodically throughout the show doing segments. This is the first episode of The Very Show. We have a studio audience here in the apartment, if we can capture them. This is crazy to me that this is even a thing, but it is. And before we start, I kind of want you guys to give yourself a round of applause for that, because that's insane. That's absolutely wonderful. The first thing I wanted to do with this show was expose people's talents to other people. So what we're gonna do with this very first episode is we're gonna have a very strange game that kind of symbolically does just that. It is called Instant Songwriter, and I'd like to bring up the two guests that I've asked to be a part of this game to be up here. Would you guys mind coming up real quick? We have Lucia Tuman and Logan Mounts. Lucia, how do we know each other? I've known you since grade school. That's weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Logan, how do we know each other? Uh, we met at Eric's house, Narnia, and you played music and you were beautiful. Stop. <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, though. Um, so you two are going to participate in the Instant Songwriter. The rules of the game is, throughout the taping of this first episode, they're going to be in a back part of the Grim Bugatti composing a song. It can be it can be 30 second song, it can be 10 minutes long, it can be a cappella. You guys can pick instruments up from around the apartment. Just nothing heavy that require you know what I'm talking about. And what I hope you can do is perform the songs at the end of the show. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to send you to the dungeon at the Grim Bugatti. Can we have a camera follow them out? Is that okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I am excited to see what this yields. We had a warm-up comedian today named Ian Abramson. We're gonna cut to some footage of him making everybody laugh before I had the ability to make everybody laugh. And then we're gonna have an interview with our performer, Def C. We'll stay tuned for that. I'm about to get a little weird. I should warn you guys at the, at the top here, all right? I'm about to get a little weird. A little bit about me. I had a weird day. Got kicked out of a Home Depot today. <laughs> True, because they don't have a dressing room and I wasn't gonna buy a bathtub without trying it on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> about me, a little bit about me, I grew up in the science projects. <laughs> That's cheap government housing made out of fake volcanoes. <laughs> I cannot believe how surprised I was when I found out that Roe versus Wade was not about ways to navigate water. <laughs> this is nature's Swiss Army knife. Alright, let me tell you why. Because the index finger says you, the middle finger says I don't like you, the ring finger says not you, I'm married to her. The pinky says I'm fancy and the thumb says good job. But here's where it gets interesting for me. Because if you split right between not you and I don't like you, you're saying I'm a nerd. <laughs> if you just leave up you and good job, you're saying I'm going to shoot you, this is a gun. <laughs> if you just put up you and I don't like you, it's peace. <laughs> because I don't like you and not you isn't anything at all. You guys know what I mean? <laughs> if you only leave up I'm fancy into you, it's punk rock. But if you add in good job, it's love in sign language. What I'm saying with all this is that the difference between punk rock and love is just a little bit of good job. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to The Very Show. I'm super excited to introduce my very first guest ever on this show. He is a rapper, poet, and as of late, teacher, which I'm going to ask him about because I'm super excited about that. Everybody, welcome Adam Levin, a.k.a. Def C. <laughs> Adam? Yes, sir. It is so good to see you again. It's good to the see you. The last time too. I saw you, we were like hurriedly talking in the blue line. You asked me what the indie rock game was like. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's cutthroat from what I heard. It was you cutthroat. Know, it's weird. All kinds of yeah. fights and. It's insane. Yeah, a lot Twitter, of strange people. Twitter beasts. A lot of Twitter. We're going to get into that. Okay, all right, you cool. told me some funny stories about that. So I wanted to first talk about your name. Okay. Your name is Def C. Yeah. On your business card, which you handed me, which is really okay. cool of you, says. 
the definition of an MC, yeah. which is what Def C means. Because you take in so many different influences as a rapper and are currently my favorite rapper in Chicago. And oh. I'm not just saying that because you're on my TV show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Should I slide you the cash under the table? <laughs> I'm a rapper too. Uh, my question is, and you can answer this in any way you like, what to you is the definition of an MC in this oh. modern world that we live in? Wow. I mean, um, I think anybody who raps can be an MC. I think there are some people who are kind of like very strict. It's, it's interesting, right? Like I think rap is a very global thing now. But there are some people who are still, they're kind of like, you know, Hasidic Jews in a way where it's just kind of like, this is something that I, I this is a way that I have to adhere to. And if you're not about this way, then uh, I'm just going to shun you for the rest of your life. Like you the idea I mean? that old school hip hop was the blueprint and like we have to do this and that. And right. Stuff. Exactly. Because I think what I value in an MC is different than from what anyone else would value in an MC. I think there are people whose opinion I totally respect who are big, sure. who are big future fans. Yeah. You know, and I can't I can't necessarily look down on that because there is something that Future does very well. For sure. I can't figure out what it is. But you yeah. know, there is something that Future does. You came on this show well. and I like Young Lean and you I assume you kind of respect me to come on this show. Yeah, That's I do. new a, info a little, for you. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't bit. know what to do with that information, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I figured I'd tell you now the the respect will decrease progressively through the interview. Okay, I I appreciate the warning. So a while ago, you sent me an email that included some songs about a place you used to work. The songs are called Kevin Smith, part one and two, yeah. which I know is a reference to Clerks. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what job that was that you did. <laughs> um, I mean, I've worked a couple of different jobs. There was, uh, when I was in college, I worked in like this student center. Mm -hmm. um, and that job involved pretty much like sit at the front desk and clean up the student center all the time and stuff like that. And just kind of like very tedious, I feel that very tedious things. So that's kind of where that came from. And also the idea of seeing clerks and being really frustrated with, you know, my station in life at that point and kind of relating to those characters. And that's also where that came from as well. Absolutely. Um, is, you know, I was like 19, 20 years old. I was really frustrated with the fact that I was in Madison, Wisconsin, which is not, you know, the best place to be if you're trying to make rap music professionally. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, and then uh, trying to figure out what was next after graduation. And I was watching a lot of Kevin Smith movies and I made those songs. I want to know, mm -hmm. as a Chicago, you know, poet and rapper, you've become sort of a teacher. I want you to explain a little bit what your class is like. Um, so it, it depends on where I'm teaching. Um, a lot of times I kind of just present a song to the kids and or I explain a concept. Right. So, for example, um, uh, personification. Right. And mm -hmm. then this is a song or a poem that's an example of personification and then kind of like a more directed writing prompt based off of that song. So for personification, I would use Stray Bullet by Organized Confusion or uh, I Gave You Power by Nas, both of which are MCs kind of talking from the perspective of a gun. And then I would give the kids kind of the you know, different objects to pick from and they would have to rap from the perspective of that object. Amazing. Yeah. So that's kind of the stuff that I do. I mean, it's poetry. It can be rap. It can be an essay. Just whatever they want to write about, they can write about it. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. I just have a few short things to ask you. So the, flat, the second to last one is. Okay. You're about to perform a song at the end of the show. Yeah. Can you explain what the song is called and what it is? Uh, the song is called Lies Rappers Tell Themselves. Uh, and the subtitle is uh, Juo Eno. Uh, because I'm a Jew, uh, yeah. and it was originally recorded to the You Only Know instrumental, but I kind of did a flip of it. A friend of mine, Ilium D, who's a producer, uh, mm -hmm. shouts out to that guy. Please uh, do. He sent me the beat, uh, and so that's what I'm gonna be rhyming over. It sounds amazing. And the song is pretty much kind of about that conflict between this is something that I can do very well and sell out, or this is something that I have to consider that's the ramification of selling out as an MC. That is so important. So that's amazing that that's a song. Yeah. <laughs> and I have one last thing to ask you. This is kind of directed if you want to talk to the camera. Mm -hmm. If there is a young aspire, I know you're you know younger yourself. I'm wondering if there's someone who is like in high school and is doing the exact same thing you were doing uh, in terms of studying rap, learning their craft, doing whatever they can to do what you do and be in your position, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them that there isn't much money in this at first. You have to do a lot of things, uh, legal things, uh, that you would not necessarily do to make money in order to survive as a rapper. Royce the 5'9", 
who raps with Eminem said you have to get very comfortable living out of your car for several years before you make it in the rap game. And I think that's kind of it too. Rappers often shame other rappers for having day jobs. There's nothing to be ashamed of for having a day job uh, in rapping as well. Whatever you can do to support yourself and support your art, you should do it and never stop chasing the dream. It's super corny. Never stop chasing the dream uh, and always work. Work, 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 work right every day. You don't get better by not doing it. And that's the advice I give you. That's incredible. Everyone, Def C. That's amazing. We are going to take, we are going to take another small break. And after that, we're going to have a special segment for you. Please stay tuned. This is the very show. That's right, from the makers of hard syrup and dry cake comes slippery fruit. Our special slip dip turns regular old stupid boring dumb yucky fruit into a great time for all. Slip dip even provides a great protective coating against germs. Share it with your lover, give it to your favorite friend. Slip dip, it's a trip. Slippery Fruit, available sometimes. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Very Show. We have a very, very special segment for you. We have an entrepreneur here who's responsible for creating the ideas that make billion-dollar growth industries happen. He's rich. He's a man of many wisdoms. He has all kinds of different money. Um, he's... <laughs> Wonder, he's very wealthy, and he happens to be my roommate and friend. We have Get Rich Quick Ideas with Johnny Fabrizio. Thank you for having me, Anthony. No problem. Please tell, take us through your presentation. Yeah, I'm very excited, actually. So let's start it. I have a PowerPoint set up to help. Oh, awesome. Help guide you guys. All right. So basically, I'm going to lay out a couple ways that you guys can get rich quick. <laughs> like, right? I, I, it's very important. <laughs> To have a lot, you, you want to have a lot of money, basically. Like, you need you, teamwork is an important part of that, obviously. Money, and I'm going to show you how to do it through technology. I'm going to let you leverage bits and bytes of data to to help. You know, you know it's easy. <laughs> so first of all, I don't like working for a corporation. Okay. Okay. Like, I'm not into it. <laughs> so basically, like these two guys, like I don't want to be those guys. So that's why I started doing my own schemes. Schemes of my own design. So it's no. The answer is no. I don't want to work for a corporation. I, I think corporations are stressful. And I think that bosses and managers make no sense because I'm my own boss and I'm my own manager. That's wonderful. Yeah. So this is actually a picture of me working on uh, my product. Okay. That's cool. Wonderful. So the hardest part of getting rich. Okay. So the hardest part of getting rich is obviously... Lack of ideas. <laughs> you, you do need ideas to get rich. If you don't have an idea, you're not going to be able to get rich. But that's not it. You need, you need good ideas. You, you, they, they, if they're bad ideas, it's not really going to work. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah so basically, that's, that's... Okay, so basically, I, I kind of lay out money made with and money made without <laughs> ideas. So basically, this first bar here is the money I made last week with no ideas. I made about $10. Ten, where'd you get the ten? Uh, my mom. Okay. <laughs> awesome. The week before that, I uh, I used ideas, and I made I made a billion dollars. <laughs> and it was a billionaire. Yeah, so that was nice. Wonderful. Please continue. Yeah, definitely. This graph here kind of lays out. <laughs> this graph, this is a simple graph that helps lay out kind of how I've made my money over the past three days. Okay. okay. So I have my ideas here. But the days I made the money, and then the money here, and it's I think it's pretty straightforward. So I'm just gonna continue going. <laughs> Clears everything right up. That's, yeah, that's great. <laughs> okay, so my idea is my get rich quick scheme is ideas that no one's ever had. That's wonderful. So I know it sounds crazy, right? Unbelievable. So I made this website. It's called PrettyCoolIdeas.com. Okay. Basically, it generates new billion dollar ideas every second. So every second of every day, we're getting new billion dollar ideas. Amazing. And okay. you use those ideas, you make a lot of money, and you know, Facebook.com is a good idea, but this website makes Facebook.coms. 
And, all right. So I'll take your word for it. This is my okay. first idea. It's a steam-powered giraffe. This was this is generated by my algorithm that I developed. What's up? All right. <laughs> so basically, we actually have this prototype right now. It's right now it's a remote controlled on in the prairies. And what it's doing right now is it's getting hard to reach things that are up high. And we're very excited about that. It's a giraffe. Low pollution. Makes sense. The second big idea is monopolizing the last name Kravitz. <laughs> so basically, I think... Well, I've already done it. So, I've, oh. so I own the last name Kravitz now. So Lenny Kravitz had to give me all his money. So that was a lot of money. And also, whenever somebody is born and they're named Kravitz... Last name Kravitz, they have to pay me money. Oh, it's, it's as simple as that. <laughs> it's very simple. Uh, my uh, third idea was a very understanding saxophone solo. Um, I think that one speaks for itself. Underst I know nothing more we can address about that. I don't think so. Yeah, do go on. <laughs> and uh, inedible, ar <laughs> inedible arrangements is my last idea that I'm sharing with you today. And this is basically like, you know what edible arrangements are, right? Chocolates. Uh, Flowers that are chocolate. Yeah, yeah, and then your mom gives it to you. She's like, "Go, oh, thanks, mom." <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, get well soon. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah. yeah. So basically, inedible arrangements last. They last last a lifetime. That's <laughs> that's brilliant. So I'm, I, that one's already made me six billion dollars, <laughs> and I just built it last week. You have seven billion dollars. More than that. And seven billion and ten. But yeah, you're probably wondering, does it really work? It really works. These are all things that I've gotten. That was me. That, that was me on Saturday. It's a shutter shock. <laughs> that's actual. That's an actual technology. That's a recent photo. That's a, actually that's an idea I also developed. It's a money magnet. <laughs> but I mean, you, you, cool things like Bugattis. Oh, the Grim Bugatti. Yeah, and that's you no know, stock market. We're doing great, basically. <laughs> you should invest in us. That is brilliant. And basically, the last thing is technology oh. is the future. <laughs> that is amazing. And everybody, this is Johnny Fabrizio. He's got Get Rich Quick Ideas for everybody. Now, Johnny, I'm going to ask you to step aside because I found out some very exciting information just now because I organized the show. We have the results of the instant songwriter competition coming, and we need them to come up here. Can we please get the instant songwriters up here again? Where are they? Now, so, this, so the results of this will be judged by a very special man, me and our guest, Adam, AKA Def C. Def C, could you come up here, please? <laughs> You can kind of ch uh, you can kind of chill by me. Maybe sit down or something like that. Do you mind? We make rappers sit down in the Grim Bugatti. <laughs> Step down. Okay. So can we decide who goes first by a short rock paper scissors? No two out of three. Yep. Rock paper scissors shoot. Oh snap. Okay, Logan. What is the name of your song? Uh, the name of the song is A Map of Atlantis. <laughs> um, I cannot wait to hear this. Please perform it. Okay. There's a map of Atlantis on my mother's old wall, but it's faded and worn. I can't read it at all. She's used it to roll her fake cigarettes, but the only rolls I got were staling baguettes from the Navy. <laughs> but, they, <laughs> but they don't taste that good with father's old biscuits and gravy. And no matter what happens, only the sun god can save me. Atlantis is much too crowded for kids, so I'll stay where I know the Bugatti is grim. Because <laughs> I don't want to live where I have to swim. That is beautiful! I loved it! Alright, I could have written more, but I would have gone broke. <laughs> Lucia, what is the name of your song? I didn't name it. Oh, that's very artistic. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I was under so much pressure. Oh, but, um, I understand. Me, you, you mean me barking at you to leave the room to write a song was yeah. pressure? And he wrote his on money. I think that's a bribe. That's, I didn't realize that was money. I'm not taking that this money. This my cold hard cat. Oh my god. Okay. That's as real as it gets. Okay, could you please perform your song? Uh, absolutely. All right. Gotta get in the group. <laughs> I got invited to this show today, and I thought that it might be fun to stay, and then they asked me to play a game. 
and I didn't want to be lame. <laughs> so I said, sure, okay. <laughs> And then they locked me in a room. <laughs> and they made me write this tune. And this is the best I could do in 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful to me. Okay, Def C, what do you think? And keep in mind, you guys are both winners in my mind, but we only have one prize. <laughs> well, uh, sir, you, you wrote your song on Dollar Bill, which is something every rapper aspires to. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have so much money that we just use Dollar Bill <laughs> as notebooks. Uh, and you also uh, had something about rolling rolling up. It's cigarettes, but it's rolling up. <laughs> and you know, that's very popular in rap music. And then your song was topical. Uh, it had to do with current events. <laughs> and by current events, I mean uh, uh, stuff that just happened five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, I'm going to have to go with Lucia uh, because her song had a maraca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, that's strange because I'm going to go with Logan's because Logan had a really wonderful melody in the song that I'm worried you stole from the Rolling Hills of Ireland, but it's great. The but band or like the actual Rolling Hills? The actual Rolling Hills of Ireland, you stole it. <laughs> so, because I loved your song so much, and uh, you know, you love Lucia's song so much, I'm gonna bring in Evan Lorich, the Justice Wolf, to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> bring him in. <laughs> You don't, you can't explain anything, we're all gonna give him a drum roll, and he's just gonna say a name. <laughs> Logan! You win! Do you wanna know what you've won? Hell yeah. You win a CED copy of The Hobbit! <laughs> This is about as outdated as it gets. This is a cartridge that you have to find a CED player to do. So there's Holy your gift. Shit. There's Thank your you. gift. That's amazing. So, <laughs> Lucia, you get a consolation prize, which okay. is one of the cards I interviewed Def C with. <laughs> oh, uh, I think it's, that's blank. Um, he has to autograph it. The last thing I want to say, last thing I want to say is the reason we had this competition, which because is songwriting and and art and anything like that is so ingrained inside of us, even if it's funny or if it's heartfelt or if it's angry or anything like that. And I think anybody anybody's songs are great, even if they don't even know what music is, and you told them briefly what a song is, and you had them write a song in 20 minutes, I would love that song. And I think, I think it's amazing to hear even those little songs that I heard today. So once again, thank you guys for doing that. Uh, we're gonna cut to one last commercial, commercial thing, and then we're gonna have a performance by Def C. Everybody sit tight, this is The Barry Show. Yes, ma'am, now. Sure, catch. Oh, I think this fruit's gone bad. Surprise! It's a slippery fruit. Oh, honey, do you know how they make slippery fruit? Sure. It's their patented slip dip formula. It makes yucky, boring fruit into fun, slippery fruit. This is going to be hard to hear. They take the nicest fruit they can find, and then they cover it with slip dip. It has all this bad stuff in it that hurts the fruit and you. Why would they do that to fruit? Fruit is nice. Oh, fruit is nice. But that's not the worst part. The fruit that isn't slippery enough, they just kill. I hate slippery fruit! Everybody, I'd like to introduce Def C again with the song Lies Rappers Tell Themselves. All right, let me get a little bit of crowd participation. I'm gonna test you guys out. All right, now, 
When I say deaf, y'all say C. Deaf, C. deaf, C. All right, that was good. That was good. You guys are you guys are doing good. All right. Uh, now repeat after me. You don't even know what you want. You want. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. It's got to be on rhythm. I know we have like a crowd full of white people, but I trust you guys. All right, cool. All right. Now, you don't even know what you want. You want. Now. You don't even know what you want. You want. Nice. Road to the riches, but we never pit a total. Generation YOLO, decorated mojo, elevated solo, toast your chest. Slow mo sex in the old most stress. Second hand smoke, up and draw, don't catch. Pedal to the flow, to the low, low wreck. Talk real slick with the loco breath. Heavy as the head and the thong don't rest. Baby, we the kings of the kid, no fuck. Keep it on the low, Joe, give no trust. Roll with the winner, so kiss your luck. Sims gonna live and the pimps gon' strut. And we mad pretty though, like a rap video. Stacks in the lap, but we flashing the biddies though. Stashing the sack in the back, we'll relax and we find us a sap for the rap that we pin it on. Maybe this an image or a gimmick. Fuck a cynic, Joe, I'm with it. And what's real is that my kids gon' eat. Gon' eat, and when we finish with this business, we gon' shit on all the critics while we kick it in the window seat, do seat. And your magazine is gon' love it. All this magic cleaning, no scrubbing. All your rap dreams don't cut it. That's Vaseline and no fucking. Now, you don't even know what you want. You want. Now, what you want. What you want. All right. Fuck how well you rhyming, dog. This game just a cult of persona. Better reconsider that Kool-Aid cup for another rapper, Go Jim Jones, yeah. And they yelling ball in with their hands in the air and they wrist on global warming. Cause that ice get melted down in soul when he owing them checks to Warner. Got you trying to buy them things they rented. Got some change, they stains as endless. End of the day, the exec with his name on his check. Got them ranges of Benzes. End of the day, I'm on the bus of the train till it rang out message. Don't be a menace, don't be successes. That'll be the second that they finna yoke you for your necklace. Nothing's in the, nah, uh Damn. Woo! Breath, hold on. Nothing is impossible with money. Almost everything impossible without it. Hella easy to be starting at the bottom when there's never really ever been a bottom in your wallet. Kendrick got him rapping about rapping. Didn't y'all motherfuckers see the point? It don't matter how loud you shout if you ain't doing shit with your voice. And you don't even know what you want. You want. You guys are doing better. You don't even know what you want. What you want. This side of the room, ready? You don't even know what you want, what you want. This side of the room. You don't even know what you want, you want. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Awesome. Oh, that was beautiful. All right, everybody who's watching the very show and everybody who's here tonight, I have a closing song that I've written and I'm gonna perform at the end of every episode of the very show. It's to both you and the viewers at home and it goes like this. I'm sad to say it's time to go. Thank you for coming to this very show. I hope you laughed. I know you did Cause you're right here, you dummies I see you, you dummies For those at home I hope you know That I'm glad you watched this fairy show Good night Goodbye from the fairy show Thanks, everybody. Have a good night.